Hi, this video is about DEXT or DXT, which is a free VST instrument made by Digital Suburban. It's pretty amazing, but it's also quite quirky, probably not because of Digital Suburban, but more because of the Yamaha DX7, which this instrument is based on. So I thought it would be good to do this little quick run through so you can get started. If you like what I do, please consider sponsoring this channel by checking out the links in the description. Also like and subscribe because that's an easy way for me to know that these videos are of value to you. All right, let's do this. This video will make an assumption that you will have some basic understanding of what FM synthesis is. However, if that is brand new to you, I suggest that you pause this video and check out another video that I've done. I'll put the link in the description below. It's only a few minutes long and it will give you that introduction, which will be really useful for this video because I might be using some terminology that is very specific to FM synthesis. Okay. We have a fresh project in Ableton Live 11 suite with a new instance of Dext. The default patch may demo what this synth can do, but it's not very useful if you want to make your own sound. So the first thing to do is to press this init button to make sure that you start with a clean slate. Dext uses six oscillators. Or maybe I should use the term operator because that's more commonly used in terms of FM synthesis, even though they are actually the same thing. I should already apologize because I will probably mix these words up quite a bit during this video. Each of the oscillators consists of the same set of parameters. This section here deals with the tuning. The three parameters here are quite self-explanatory. Next to it, you will find a switch where you can set it either to ratio and fixed. And this is quite interesting. It's set to ratio by default. And that means that whatever you have set the pitch to will be in relation to the MIDI notes coming in. So you can play melodies. If you set this to fixed, it doesn't matter which MIDI notes are being pressed. That oscillator will only output the particular frequency that you have chosen. This can be quite useful in some cases. For example, if you're making percussion. Another example when this can be useful is if you want to make something really atonal. Try to set the carrier to ratio so you can play a melody. And then you pick some of the other oscillators, the modulators, set them to fixed and pick some random frequencies and you're going to get some really atonal and gnarly sounds. The next section is the volume envelope. Although it is an attack decay sustained release envelope, it's not working quite in the way that I'm familiar with. Each stage have two parameters, one being the level and the other one being called rate. I think it's easier to think of rate as being duration of that particular stage. I find this envelope a bit back to front. As you can see, the release parameter is set to max. I would normally associate that with really long release tails, but it actually means that that stage of the envelope is really fast. So if you want a long release, you have to turn it down and therefore you will have the sound ring out for longer after you've released the key. In this area, you can set the volume of the oscillator. You can also set how much it will be affected by velocity as well as the LFO. In this final area of the operator, 
you can set how the volume is affected by the MIDI note that's coming in, depending on where you're playing on the keyboard. This could be really interesting for melodic parts, for example, where you can choose to introduce FM the higher up on the keyboard you're playing, or the other way around, the lower on the keyboard you're playing. You have two parameters here where you set the left and right volume level of the oscillator or operator. And this slider here defines where the midpoint is. So if you're above that note, it will be towards the right. And if it's below, it will be towards the left. You can also set the curve, defining the rate, how quickly the volume will change from the center point to the left and to the right. You can have it linear or you can have it more of a curve. Now you can see the parameters that we've gone through, they are over and over again until we get down to this section. Here you can set the overall volume for your sound. You can also do the tuning and transposition. There is also a low pass filter which I do not think exists on the original DX7, but if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. This is quite good to have this low pass filter because FM synthesis often creates quite harsh overtones and just to be able to dial them back a bit. In this area, you can also open and save your presets and things like that. There is also a toggle switch here where you can set it to being a mono synth instead, which can be quite useful if you're making a percussive pattern or something like that. In this area, you can see the current algorithm running. It shows you how the different oscillators are connected to one another. The carriers are the ones on the bottom row, and they are actually the oscillators that you hear. The other ones are affecting the oscillators that you are hearing to create the FM sound. These little loops are where there is feedback happening, and you can dial that feedback up and down here. Next is the LFO. It's fairly self-explanatory, but there's just a few things to point out. The P mod sense defines how much the pitch modulation is affected. PMD defines the depth of the pitch modulation, and AMD is the depth of the amplitude modulation. The amplitude modulation I showed you earlier, that's the dial where you can set how much the LFO is affecting the volume of each individual oscillator but the pitch modulation is just for all of them and you can't set that individually. The last area is possibly the most puzzling section. It's the pitch modulation. And at a glance, it just looks like the envelopes for each of the oscillators. The odd thing is the final stage, which I would think of normally as release, but it's not only affecting the release, you're basically setting the pitch level for the beginning and the end of the sound, which will be the same. So if you set the sustain stage to low and you turn the release up to high, the sound will start high, go down to the sustain level, and when you release the key, it will go back up again, which is quite odd if you're making percussive sounds, for example. This quirk drives me mad but I also love it a little bit sometimes because it just creates sounds that I would usually not make. I hope you found this video useful. So what can you do next? I have just released another video where I use text to create all the sound design for an IDM and glitch track. So if that's something you're into, that's something you might want to check out. Thank you very much for watching and hope to see you again. Bye.